Yeah, this is the start of it now. Maybe I should have my torch on. What do you think? Uh, flashlight. Okay. This is still there. I think this is it. Look at the gate. God. <laughs> Even that's ominous. Wait. Am I at it? Yep, that's it. Alright, I'm going up here. Okay. I might even go down one of these. Whoa. <laughs> I hope the GoPro's getting this. Oh, I forgot my music. Oh well. I think there's enough going on tonight. Um, I just had a huge meal too. I feel so bloated. I can't run fast. I just feel too heavy go across this massive road Xinyang, oh can't go yet Xinyang has got some huge roads for what is it, quite a small city in the middle of China and there were some rumours and I think they had some credibility that Xinyang was built as some kind of backup city in case anything ever went wrong um, with Beijing that they could they could quickly relocate the the capital not all of Beijing of course but just the capital buildings here kind of like a Washington or Canberra not a huge city but just a government center if needed because um there's everything here that they would need it's a very good water supply all sorts of other things like that so anyway i'm going to go into the park and go under and this is my first run my first gopro run at night so it might be absolutely terrible but anyway we'll see is it terrible that's an exhibition center the Xinyang Exhibition Center. Again, giant for a city of this size. The core city of Xinyang is about, about a million people, which is officially a small city in China. Um, but the greater area, if you have the surrounding districts, it's about six million apparently. So here's the big park, the sculpture focal point of the park. It's pretty cool. I'll just do a quick run under it and then head to the communes. Which are the opposite way that I'm going by the way. But anyway, it's alright. Oh god my legs are heavy though. So you can see by the people here, this is a, not a small sculpture, it's pretty huge. <laughs> not Eiffel Tower huge, but again for a city that don't, no one re even knows about, most Chinese basically don't even know this city. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. And there's the exhibition center. Nice. All right, let's go. It's about, I think about 27 degrees and pretty humid. 
so it's not as hot as Shenzhen but the humidity is still it makes it kind of uncomfortable uh, more comfortable than Shenzhen because Shenzhen is like this higher humidity and then um, higher temperature as well which is killer so this is still better than that but yeah so Xinyang the other thing about Xinyang which is pretty funny is um when they were then making this grand scale version of the place somebody on Google Maps saw it and saw that there was these huge roads with huge buildings and really no cars anywhere because the whole thing was getting built from scratch and that person about 10 years ago thought oh oh I found a Chinese ghost city <laughs> oh, I gotta run on the grass here um, which is ridiculous now because there are those areas are now full of people I'll go straight down here that's my hotel on the left hand side I'll go down the road still pretty quiet compared to Shenzhen around these areas but then Shenzhen's got 15 million people you know Beijing's got 25 million etc etc Now I hear you asking <laughs> why am I making this video? I'll go through the whole thing um, I love to run my name's Peter and I love to run <laughs> and um, uh, during COVID and not long after I was forced to run in my apartment and um, not in my apartment uh, indoors and I bought a treadmill and of course it didn't take me too long because I run about 15k per day to get horribly bored of that so I found that on YouTube quite a few people post running scenery videos of where they live in the world and it saved me they were awesome I could happily run on my treadmill to those videos and this is my contribution to that plus as you just saw then going into a park and all of that running is a very um, efficient way of seeing a place you can easily go places where cars can't go and even bikes and it's a lot quicker than walking so if it was walking it would take far too long or I'd need to speed it up and then my voice wouldn't work and all that kind of stuff so running is pretty ideal I think for two reasons one is the treadmill runners and also anybody that's just interested in um, cities I try to do commentary so you can kind of get to know the place rather than just you know um, silent uh, scenery as well so I'm heading out of this new area when I turn right here and I'm starting to dive back into back, starting to dive into the old area I've got to go down a hill and then it's a bit of a maze but I should be okay I've been there before I used to live here about five years ago so I don't know I do know this area pretty well
my pace isn't too bad about 445 450 per kilometer that's about where I should be but I have to say I'm not comfortable You can hear me burping. That's from all the food in my belly. I went to Hot Pot tonight and ate far too much. It was awesome, but I had too much. Whoop. I'm trying to get hit by anyone. This is the last of the new area. After this, we go into there. But I'm not going to run down that trail, it's too dark. I'm going to go in the main entrance of it. But I feel this, that area in there is actually quite creepy to go through in the daytime. I've never actually done it at night, and certainly not with a GoPro. I think I need a nature break. Just gonna go in here. Oh, actually, I might be able to even go down here. But I'll have a nature break here first. Okay, I finished that. Now I'm just gonna check the map. I wanna see if I can go down there, whether I should just keep running down the main road. Hmm. Oh. Hello. <laughs> um, map. Oh yeah, I actually have to go this way. Lucky. Lucky I did this. This is the way. Good. Lucky for the nature break, hey? But it is very dark. I mean, it's not scary dark, but it's, um, I just wonder about the GoPro. Okay, running again. Ah. Hello. But I like um, Xinyang. It's certainly a traditional city. Um, it's not generally modern like places like Shanghai or Shenzhen. But it's got this history that's kind of sad. Um, if it's correct. I mean, I think it is. But uh, the Great Leap Forward was a bad period in China's history and um, Xinjiang was pretty much in the center of that um, a lot of people here at that time uh, died mainly from famine and other things so and a lot of them were living in these communes at that time so yeah that's the history I'm almost like I hope there's no hole here I'm not really watching the road I was watching my map and um, the road all of a sudden got very rough I broke my leg once doing that fell in a hole I was in Myanmar and I'm um, here yeah, 
looking at the road while I was coming forward, all of a sudden smash, I was in a hole with a shattered, um, what was it, fibia. This femur, tibia and fibia. It was the fibia, I think. I needed to get kind of rescued and patched up by local um, Myanmar um, a soldier, a military hospital, which was pretty freaky. They had guards in my room 24 hours a day. Quite an experience. But they did a good job. Okay. This is not... Well, actually, I think they might be old commune buildings too. But not the exact ones I'm looking for. How far am I? Three kilometers, okay. Yeah, that's about right. I'm just gonna have to walk for a bit while I figure this out. I think I can, I nearly walked into a car. I can go down here. Yeah, this is the start of it now. Maybe I should have my torch on. What do you think? Uh, flashlight. Okay. This is still just the entrance. I've got to turn right to go into a proper. And then it should be here somewhere. There. I think this is it. Look at the gate. God. <laughs> Even that's ominous. Wait. Am I at it? Yep, that's it. All right, I'm going up here. Okay. So people are still living here. I feel I should, I feel like I should walk, but it's all right. You can pause if you want to see anything. Oh, a bat just went past me. Some puppy dogs up here. Should I say? Run! Hey! Shh! No! Hey! Go on! Yeah! <laughs> Don't you chase me. <laughs> I hate those little ankle biters. If you're chasing me anymore. I'm going to seriously kick him. Okay, that's done. I've been bitten in the back of my Achilles heel before by dogs like that. And I just think, oh, it's just a cute little dog. Just barking. All of a sudden, bang, ow! i got to check the map again now. Because it is pretty easy to get lost in here. I right, to go to the top. I go to the end here and then turn left. Some locals. I might even go down one of these. Whoa. <laughs> I hope the GoPro's getting this. That's the end of it. Oh, more annoying dogs. Is that one there? Hey. <laughs> okay. That was a very polite dog. Unless it runs behind me and bites me now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can I go down there? No. This one sounds bigger. There's a lot of dogs in here. Oh, 
That's not very big. Hey! Okay. Now I turn right, left in here. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta say, my heart's racing. Not from the dogs, I mean, the dogs are kind of annoying. But, um, going through that narrow alleyway. Oh, now I think we go. No, the next one. See there? Yeah, just around this corner. Oh, look, you can see the old city. There's Xinyang Jan. That's the old slow train station. Not the high speed rail, but the old traditional rail. I might even go and have a squeeze. Nice. There's the city's only McDonald's in there somewhere. How do you like that? City of basically six million with one McDonald's <laughs> and one Burger King. Okay, back to it. I mean, I, I always thought that was great. All right, back into some more of the old, oh, there's a bike without a light. It was like a ghost coming to me out of the darkness for a second there. People playing mahjong. These are double story ones here. Can you see them? I think the first ones were actually kind of cooler. Now, there's a new big road up here and um, I don't think I'm really gonna take it. Uh, that's the, I like that way out better, but it's only gonna be, that doesn't take very long. Um, I'll go up to the road, it's all right. What do you think so far? <laughs> if you can even watch it, I mean, it might just be trash and I might not even use this because of the darkness. But anyway, yeah. Hopefully you can. I wonder if I should even publish it, even if it's just dark and crappy. Just so the audio <laughs> might make it feel even more, um, creepy uh, I think this is a dead end <coughs> yeah this doesn't link with the other road although you can get down there okay <coughs> no I'm not gonna do that that's a bit boring isn't it but you can see them here right see that's the facade and here as well okay so I'm gonna go back and then go down that other little track which only lasts for a couple of hundred meters really This one? Yeah, this one. Is that a Waybridge or something? I don't even know. I hope this is open now, after saying all of that. But uh, maybe it's not even open. Oh, this looks locked. Oh, looks like I'm coming back again. I used to be able to get through here. Oh. But I mean, that was five years ago, so I suppose it's not surprising that some things have changed. Oh well. Although I remember it was kind of a bit more rugged, not just straight out of a road like that. So I might, I might still look for a little sneaky way through here. Oh, this looks a bit like a trip hazard. What is this? Maybe it's a cleaning grate for cleaning trucks or something. All right, going up here.
and I'm looking for anything on the left hand side that looks remotely open otherwise I'll just go into the road that's all I can do there's some gates there but they're all they all look very shut and I'm not going to try any of them I've been around China long enough not to do that I mean it's not that I'll get arrested or anything it's just that people actually live in these places and it just feels a bit rude to walk through their backyard and things all right so I'm going down here steep hill here woo I don't need the light anymore or the map I know exactly where I am now I can go across here okay phone away and away we run one of my favorite memories about living here was um there's no metro here and um i used to take taxis and things or buses to get to work it was about 6k or something and i didn't like either of them the traffic was always really bad in the morning especially so i started riding my bike but that was a bit i don't know didn't really gel very well it doesn't it wasn't really smooth going and then I bought a longboard skateboard and it was perfect and I used to ride this longboard for about 6k's every morning and every afternoon to work and back and it was so cool because I could just jump off and carry when I wanted to when the road turned to crap and then jump back on and ride it when the roads were good and the roads were good like 90% of the time but um that 10% made it like hard to ride a, a bicycle on you know so the the longboard was basically the same speed as riding a bike because of that it was just fun I'm still a crap skateboard rider <laughs> but it was fun how many k have I done? 5k This 5k doing job right now, this brings my total for the week just nice and neatly to 100k. So I'm kind of done, that's my goal every week. Just hit the 100. So I guess, having said that, I could probably just stop and just walk home, but I'm all right, I'm feeling better now. It's weird, running is weird. Sometimes you feel really good at the start of the run and get progressively worse. Oh, someone, it looks like someone had a crash here, but they're just buying some stuff off a roadside cellar. Anyway, sometimes you feel great at the start and then get tired and progressively feeling worse. Other times in running, you feel worse at the start and then when you slowly warm up, you feel better and better. I love running. <laughs> I actually, now that I've said that I'm all motivated, I feel like going a bit quicker. I might even turn the speed up, see how quick I can go without throwing up. Although I'm still going up a hill, maybe I'll wait till I'm on top. And then, because the video has GPS instruments all over it, so you'll be able to see any speed increase. This is now 440. I should be able to get under four minutes very easily.
when I, saw, when I say four minutes, I mean four minutes per kilometer, which is about 15 kilometers per hour. I mean, it's exactly 15 kilometers an hour. All right, here's the beginner section. My hotel is on the right hand side down here. So I'm up on the hill now, and now it's just flat. I'll stay on the road though because I think the lighting's a bit better and I'm going to go a bit quicker now. What is it now? Three forty. Uh, yeah, about that, about 3.40. Uh, I can't do this for long though. Hello! Hello! Hello. <laughs> you too! Come on! <laughs> There's not many foreigners in this city. I'm gonna try and keep it up till the traffic lights here. I mean, I didn't hold it completely. I think I blew out to about 3.45, right? Or 3.48, but that's all right. Now I'm back at the start. I'm sure you can see that by the little map on the screen. The park is on my left-hand side. This is the exhibition building again. My hotel's dead ahead on the right hand side. Oh, I can barely talk now. I'm still going quick. I don't need to be doing 415. Slow down boy. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got to see that. If you did, let me know. What did you think? And um, does this would you like to see more videos like this? If you would, of course, I'd love you to like and comment and subscribe. Subscribing is for you because um, as I do new stuff, it'll come up in your feed and you'll find it easily. I try to post something um, about once a fortnight, um, but it varies. Sometimes it's once a week, sometimes it's once a month. So yeah, hit that subscribe if you wanna be in the loop. Huh? I'm not even, what? Oh yeah, yeah I'm six and a half, 6.6K. That's what I'm gonna stop here. Huh. I might even keep it going. So the running has stopped. My GPS has stopped. I might even take you up to the room, show you in a typical middle of China sort of business um, hotel room. I think this room would have probably cost, I didn't pay for it. Um, some things you get free. <laughs> this is one of those things. Um, 
but I think it probably would have cost about 100 US dollars so keep that in mind when you see it okay it's probably it might be less actually probably somewhere between 80 and 100 US dollars they do a great breakfast too here my god it's good I'll put an uh, image of the breakfast up on the screen so you can see really enjoyed it many hotels um, in China have got very traditional Chinese breakfasts which you know they're okay but um, they get a little bit let's say traditional after a while this one here is not like that it's got amazing um, selection of all kinds of breakfast cuisine <laughs> not Vegemite though I'm an Aussie and I demand Vegemite they do not have Vegemite so it doesn't get a 10 out of 10 just 9 I think actually probably not 9 it's probably 8 but 8 still good this is called something flower um, the middle flower hotel or something like that all the buses here are getting out of their bus van I was in an elevator before with some very drunk bosses they were super friendly and I spoke in my very limited Chinese which was like literally terrible and they in their drunken state they um they thought I was speaking amazing Chinese so here's, here's, here's the lobby I think they're a development company that owns this hotel and that must be their latest development that I'm sure they've got an office here to, to sell um, apartments from Xinjiang's pretty cheap compared to um, cities like Beijing, Shanghai and Shenzhen obviously because it's a you know in the middle of a small city in the middle of the country uh, the closest big city to here is actually Wuhan Wuhan's about 40 minutes on a fast train up here 25 that guy was smoking in the non-smoking elevator which drives me nuts that's the kind of thing I really hate about these traditional places those guys just don't give a <laughs> about rules like that all right I hope I've got my key card. Key card, yay. Hello, look how sweaty I am. Yeah. It's a bit of a slow lift, this one. And I bought a waterproof case for my phone. It's supposed to be waterproof. It's a Samsung S10e. It's old, but it's good. I like it because it's small, good and easy to run with. But it's not as waterproof as it should be. I kept killing them. So I bought this case. It was super cheap. It was like 10 bucks US in China and it's just completely waterproof and you can still use it really well. You can see here. Oh, I just gave you my <laughs> swipe card. I might have to cut that one out. Um, anyway, here's my room. 2507 and I left my second card in so it still stays warm. I'm cool in here. So in here we've got the bathroom, profit dunny, big toilet, I mean big shower and a bath which is pretty unusual in China and then a, uh, is that a king size bed? I guess it, yeah it's definitely a king size bed and then the view down to the park. All right, that's me. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please do all that, that YouTube-y stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.